This morning we're heading up to Advance Auto, picking up that coolant temp sensor that I talked about in my last video for the 240. While I'm uh, out here running some errands, I'm going to stop by Harbor Freight or Home Depot, whatever is uh, convenient for me. I'm going to stop by, pick up some grinding discs, and then we're going to start mocking up and cutting out the template for uh, a few things for my fuel cell. What we're going to do is uh, basically take that cardboard that I used to trace out the area that I wanted to uh, like clean up, which is around the fuel cell, either side of them, and oh, the maintenance guy. <laughs> that was one of my buddies. He works maintenance here at my uh, apartment complex. Uh, he's one of like one of my fans for my 240. Sports my little build. Shout out to you if you're watching. I don't think he does. Anyways, we're gonna run up and get some grinding discs to uh, basically start cutting out like the floor pan and everything that's around the uh, fuel cell that's just been hacked up and it's disappeared. I'll show you guys when we get back to the car so you guys have a better idea. It's in one of my last videos when I mocked up uh, what I was gonna do for like a firewall for the fuel cell. So I'm gonna run up here, grab all these parts, grab those uh, cutoff wheels, and then meet you guys back at the garage. All right, got the coolant temp sensor, off to Harbor Freight. Stopped at Harbor Freight real quick. I picked up some flat wheels and uh, I got 20 cutoff wheels. We're gonna be cutting a lot of material, so I need to have a ton of those things. We're gonna head back to the house now. We are back at my place, guys. I have to put some Teflon tape on our coolant temp sensor and get that installed because I took the other one out yesterday and I don't want it to leak or anything. So I'm gonna knock that out really, really quick, move the car over here and then explain kind of my uh, my idea that I have in my head and like just kind of go over some things with you guys. Alright, new water temp sensor is in there. Time to move her over to the garage and uh, show you guys what I have planned and in store for what we're doing with this fuel cell back here. So I want to explain to you guys what I've been thinking about doing for this firewall system. If you look back a couple videos, I go over like kind of an idea and a system that I'm going to use as a firewall to prevent fuel, you know, catching on fire or spilling out and splashing into the cab while I'm driving. If you guys don't know, they won't let you drive like this on the track. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I'm addressing these giant holes that have been cut inside of my 240. I've been calling it the crater. I don't know why the person decided to cut a hole this big for a fuel cell, but that's what they did. And you can see the little cardboard cutout that I had here. What I'm going to do is take this little cut out, trace it on to uh, that tailgate over there. I've been using the tailgate for all of my sourced metal because it's it's pretty thick and it, it works great. It's really thick. So shout out to you tailgate, thank you. I'm gonna cut out the little traced out area that I have here and then set it down in here. I'm obviously gonna work my edges with a flat wheel and kind of get it to fit so that way I have a floor pan in this area. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. I don't know if I'm going to do that today because it requires me pulling down my, my uh, fuel pump here and all of the uh, relays and the wiring harness. I might go ahead and do it. That way I can knock it out and have two sides done and then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing about back here if I'm just going to simply block it off or so on and so forth. But that's what I've been thinking about doing for that little firewall project. Mike actually sent me a video of someone's S13. They had something similar and I kind of like the idea of it and I want to try it. And instead of welding everything, what I'm gonna do, let me grab my little handy dandy template here. I'm gonna set it up for you guys. Hold on one second. So this is more along the lines that I was thinking for a little firewall or a fire box. And I had the original idea of welding these joints together. Mike sent me somebody who had already done this or something similar. And all they used were little L brackets and they clamped their two pieces of metal together. Hold on, there's a tow truck, so give me a second. Well, while this tow truck sits here and, and annoyingly runs while I'm trying to film, I got some new bumper clips for my front bumper. I'm going to go ahead and install these guys. They're a little bit nicer than the ones that I have on it right now. Alright guys, so the tow truck is out of the way now. I can 
finally explained some things to you. Hopefully this wind, my microphone is awful on this thing, if you guys haven't noticed, so hopefully this wind doesn't uh, interfere. If you guys look back a couple videos ago, I posted something about setting up this firewall. I think I've already said this, I can't remember when that, before the tow truck pulled up, but this is going to be the basic template that I had, and I planned on welding each corner, but Mike sent me somebody, or sent me some video offline of a guy who had a similar setup, and instead of welding these up, he just simply used some L brackets in each corner. I don't know what size gauge the, the metal was, but the L brackets in the corner are going to help me uh, so much because I'm going to be able to save some time and some money and obviously some welding wire and some gas so I don't have to weld up these corners. I can just put the L bracket there and then weld in a uh, tab to where I can sit my bolt for the wing nut to uh, screw the top on and off. So that's my idea. Before I even get uh, out there and try to, you know, attempt to do something like that, I need to figure out what to do about these floor pans. Hopefully this idea will work out. I'm going to get to tracing this guy out and we're going to cut it out and fit it up and then we're going to try to do the other side too. I don't know if I'm going to have enough with this tailgate. Like I said, this is just some cheap, free, easy metal. I'm not going to ever use this tailgate again. It's got dents and bondos and cracks and it's all rusty. So we'll put it to good use. All right, well, as you guys see there, we've got one piece cut out. I'm gonna have to clean this up and start shaping it up to fit inside of the car. So I got the piece cut out of the tailgate there, and before I go trimming it up and shaping it up, I wanna show you guys what it looks like and kinda my general idea of what I had planned. This is the section of the tailgate. As you can see, these two bolts over here, those are for my rear bumper, same thing with this side, those two over there. I have to make sure those are exposed. If I cover those up, then my bumper's gonna be stuck on and I'll be SOL. You guys can see how I have this idea in my head and how this is gonna work about saving my 240, repairing this floor pan as best I can. I'm gonna have to get some dry ice so I can get up all of this sound deadening resin stuff right here that I can't weld on, obviously, and a chisel and a hammer will take forever. Freeze it really quick with some dry ice and then hit it with a hammer and it's supposed to all shatter. Offbeat Garage did something about it, so did Adam LZ. It's all over YouTube, you guys can check that out. I'll have to remove the uh, fuel pump and all the wiring, the stock harness, get that stuff out of the way, and then get the gas tank out of the way before I can do this side, because I want to make sure that I do it right and have it nice and pretty along the, the side of the fuel cell, and then I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing about my lines. So I can't really get too crazy because I have to get the hydromat and uh, get the hydromat set up with the lines coming off the top to the pump and then I can start working my way. But that's the general idea. That's what I'm working with. I'm gonna start shaping this up, cleaning this thing up and little by little, we'll get this thing saved. So I was preparing to uh, start shaving down that metal, start cleaning everything up that I cut out of the tailgate here. But Chris actually just hit me up. He needs some help with getting his tires from his house over to the shop that his truck's at. You guys remember a couple of videos ago, I had uh, some cell phone footage that I filmed at his house showing you guys his new 24 by 16s, I think they are, his American Forces. And um, he needs some help getting those tires over there. And he said, hey, bring your camera so we can check out the truck. You guys can kind of see a behind the scenes. And if you don't know who Chris is, he's uh, AKA a guy from Jacksonville on Instagram. He had that white Chevrolet that was on uh, those 22 by 12s or yeah, 22 by 12s. And uh, he had those nice, like, 355 big meaty tires that I used to hang out with, like, two years ago or something like that. He's a really cool guy, so we're going to go check out his stuff right now. I'm going to pack up the 240 stuff, move her over there in front of the apartment, grab my keys, and head out to uh, his house. Giant freaking things. Oh 
Holy crap. They're filming this real quick, okay, bro. Look how freaking monstrous these things are. That's sick. Thanks, bro. Alrighty, well. We're gonna load these bad girls up and then uh, head over to uh, North Florida Off Road to check out Chris's truck. I'm really excited to see what this thing looks like. Have they put all the lift kit on or what? You know? Uh, the rear is done. The rear is done, so I don't know if you guys can hear. The, like hear me and Chris over the truck. So we're gonna make this quick, load these guys up and then head over there. You can literally fit one of my 240 wheel and tire inside of this thing. We had to unload those tires really quick, but we're gonna go check out Chris's truck. Look at these nice guys here. Oh man, ripping Chris's truck apart. So there's music playing in the background. So the transmission, but when you put it, when you put it, that's the rear lift, guys. They haven't started on the front yet. He said hopefully by Friday. Well, that is a wrap here at uh, Florida Off Road, checking out Chris's truck. We're gonna hop in uh, the old Dodge here and head on home. So the other night when I uh, went out with Chris to look at his truck at North Florida Off-Road, I had totally forgot to do a closer, and I didn't even film anything when I dropped him off or when I got home. It was uh, like 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, and I didn't really feel like messing around with my camera or the video or putting the content on the computer. And as you see, I'm editing the video, and I realized, oh crap, I forgot to do a closer. So I want to tell you guys that Chris's truck should be done today, which is Friday the 19th. Hopefully you guys will see it this weekend. He said he's going to come by. He's going down to Orlando for an event in his truck tonight, and then he'll be back in town so we'll film that and check his truck out. Obviously, we're going to keep on uh, working on my 240. If you guys are supporting that build and watching that build series, we're going to keep on moving forward in the next video with uh, trying to figure out what I'm doing for my fuel cell slash fuel firewall thing, whatever you want to call it. That is going to be that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're really excited about Chris's truck and my 240. I'm really stoked to see his final outcome and obviously get this freaking gas tank or fuel cell sealed off and ready for drifting. So see you guys in the next video. Thank you.